What is liberalism? A question so simple, yet there is little agreement about it. Hi! For those new here, my name is Valium Sadfem Mick Girlboss. I am a political theorist, who tries to make complicated ideas accessible with humor and lewdness. I am also your mother and girlfriend now. I know! Wow! Before we even define what liberalism is, let's start with the question. What does liberalism want? Conservatives, I might lose you here. Please try to stick it out until you recognize something familiar. Wake up liberal. Wake up sleepy Ed. I made you breakfast. I love you. Liberalism is probably the society you live in. A liberal style democracy with a capitalist economy, probably with some amount of government based social services. It helps to think of liberalism as an entity with a mind of its own, one that wants to continue to exist and wants to expand its power to protect itself, and so it will do whatever naturally seems to prevent revolt against itself. It wants us to be surrounded in media that makes liberal democracy seem natural and unavoidable, like background noise or like water to the fish. It's fucking nature, dude. It's literally everything around you. Capitalism is why you see birds. It wants us gathering on profit-driven social media, where your information is the product being sold, driven by algorithms that favor engagement over substance, to bring to us a disproportionate amount of posts highlighting human stupidity and conflict, which leave us with the sense that humanity is more divided and different than we actually are. It wants us to understand the world through a watered-down form of identity politics, to stoke divisions, and keep us from uniting in our common interests. It also wants us to substitute an understanding of what's actually going on for prepackaged reductive culture war issues, to keep our actions within the lines of liberal reformism. It wants to substitute grounded belief and action for the mere aesthetic or appearance of allegiance to ideals, so that we don't do anything and spend all our time signaling to each other how pure we are, while doing less. It wants to craft social media where we can be surveilled and accounted for as we radicalize. It wants to package radical ideas of resistance and sell back to us a neutered and washed form of them. Entertaining, comforting, supplementary to the real-life connections and organizing we know we ought to be doing. It wants to replace tangible grounded politics with abstract and detached consumer identity categories. It also wants us to associate the process of societal change and progress with individual thought leaders and their personal bickering taking focus away from the anonymous collective struggle usually behind any historical change. It wants us to compromise and work within the system to achieve our ends, even if the reality of our system is like some kind of crazy science fiction scenario, where a cruel and incomprehensible order extracts everything from the world's poorest and offers it to an increasingly smaller number of elites who pull the levers of power to maintain that scenario. It desperately needs the people of the first world comfortable and apathetic enough to never take action to stop this, so the population is pacified with a portion of that stolen wealth in the forms of luxuries, an endlessly self-affirming cycle. It wants us escaping into fantasy at the first sign of anxiety, and provides us the tools to do so. It wants us to take our happy pills and be quiet while the system leads us to destruction of our planet and our humanity. It wants you to fall in line with the colonial values that got us here, of having 2.5 worker and soldier children, for the empire, to be sacrificed upon the wheel of its mismanaged economies, to die in forever wars to prop up its endlessly crumbling economy. I'm beginning to realize capitalism kinda sucks. What liberalism fears most is that the power will go out, the internet will shut off, the media will no longer be able to broadcast their warped voices into our homes that they lose their control over perception and narrative, that people will have to sit with their raw feelings for once, unfiltered by distraction, will have to go outside and interact with other oppressed people around them and feel their pains in common, either going into a confused blind rage against all or uniting against the rich. Is it still capitalism outside? Y'all need to fix that. Do a revolution or something. Damn. How did we get here? Liberalism is a post-monarchist movement. Basically the nobles under the king wanted more power for themselves, so they got some peasants together to fight the king for them, who hired peasants to fight for them. Then when they won, 
the nobles founded governments that split land and power amongst themselves, and established rules that favored them keeping their wealth and property. They then half-assed the rights and democracy part, forming restrictive republics that made progress near structurally impossible, because they didn't trust humanity with actual democracy. Liberalism has evolved a lot since, particularly in response to the peasants waking up again, this time to the fact that the last revolution left them with a similarly raw deal, of living as working-class slaves for an arbitrary class of rich property owners. Socialism and communism are good because it's equal for everyone. Define to me what those two terms are, Karl Marx. I do not care. I will clap you in Fortnite. 1v1 me. When the contradictions and excesses of imperialistic markets plunge the world into war twice, both monarchism and capitalism could no longer be accepted as just how life was. Pressed to its limits, these systems finally revealed their weak points, and that's where the next revolutions finally broke through. And we got a look, in the USSR, China and others, at a slightly more humane state-managed market, which, putting aside legitimate criticism, provided a better life for the poor statistically. But most of such regimes were eventually subverted and destroyed by a collaboration of monarchists, liberals and fascists, united on one point. That attempts at communism were giving their people ideas too. They achieved this through means of heavy trade sanctions, and where those wouldn't work, propping up fascist dictators to wage a bloody war against the communists. The politicians and rich owners of private media would use their monopoly on the media to broadcast reductive and propagandistic visions of these countries to their people, demonizing attempts to liberate humanity for centuries. One instance of this was known as the Red Scare, but there were many other forms around the world. We also saw scattered anarchist experiments, attempts to free people from both the toil of capitalism and the authority of the state, most of which were crushed by a combination of most world powers, including the state communists. With the invention of technology, like television and internet, which allows people to access information outside their national bubble, liberalism is losing its grip on the minds of working people, who are becoming increasingly aware of the crimes of their empires. They recruit and organize and wait for the opportunity to strike again. But with the advent of nuclear weapons and mass surveillance, liberalism is more situated at the top of the heap than ever before able to use that domination to brainwash the masses and squash resistance before it can even begin. Since it is a massive system enveloping the lives of millions, with diverse cultures and problems, its responses to threats will be generalized, inefficient and bloated. But it can do something individual people can't. It receives information from everything happening within it all at once, and so it can act in ways which appear mysterious and creative to us but which reflect an understanding of the totality of all our smaller actions of resistance. No individual involved in the system has to be conscious of what is happening. The people running this system at the public and private level simply follow the incentives set up for them by the structure of the system, and never quite see beyond their small point of operation. And yet the system seems to operate with a consciousness, like every person is a neuron for the brain that is liberalism. Who is awakened? Who is awakened? Use the like button to gauge your latent spiritual powers. We have to stop passing our signals. This is an abstract understanding. Let's solidify it. The obvious form of this behavior is surveilling the movements of the populace and deploying police to suppress protesters. Or knowing that, to keep up with the next 10 years of industrial expansion, the economy will need X more oil. And so the governing institutions craft a propaganda campaign to manufacture consent in the public for sending troops overseas to force other countries to abide by favorable trade agreements and political structure, failing that, simply conquering and occupying them and taking those resources, usually disguised in propaganda as a mission to liberate the people and give them freedom. Sometimes against a fascist dictator they propped up to deal with the communists. On the one hand, the Iraq War was a huge mistake that resulted in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of civilians. But on the other hand, we are the country that invented the Ferris wheel. Share if you think America does some bad things and some good things, but they all pretty much balance out. But both of these involve obvious violence and look kind of authoritarian. And that's off-putting, even to normies. Makes them wonder if they're the bad guys. 
liberalism tries to avoid doing such things as much as possible, as it's learned from previous mistakes to conceal its true actions from the public, so it deploys other more subtle tricks to prevent things from getting to that point. Liberalism cannot allow the question of class exploitation to be resolved, as that would be its end. So it gives its populace false answers to the problems caused by its own inadequacies. Blames other countries, immigrants, the disabled, Jews, black people, gays and transgender people. This produces a fascism in the population which is then channeled strategically to crush the marginalized and poor most likely to form left-wing rebellions. This stimulates the economy through war and by removing undesirables and appropriating their wealth, superficially appearing to have fixed the problem. Basically, fascism comes about when a market society is in crisis, which happens often because capitalism is stupid as fuck and requires infinite growth in a finite world, and must manufacture scarcity to keep profit up, among other problems. The peaceful-seeming liberalism you're probably more familiar with living in is when the fascists in your national army are sent overseas to oppress someone else and extract their resources, wealth that may temporarily resolve the normal inadequacies of your local market society, leading to a calm that is considered natural and normal, but is actually built on invisible imperialism. White people react to stuff. Pokemon Go tracker glitch. <laughs> exploitation of third world labor and resources. Basically, modern liberalism has learned to export the fascism to keep a pampered voting bloc at home happy. But don't feel too secure. They will bring these soldiers back home to repress the local population, as we're seeing with the increasing militancy of the United States police. Are you okay, little one? Sorry. I got caught up in my presentation again and forgot to show you the care you deserve. Hyperfocus. <laughs> I know it can be scary to learn more and more about just how messed up the world is and how dire our situation is. I want you to know that I am very proud of you for pushing through, for being able to see the importance of these ideas for our lives and for everyone. And I'm honestly a bit surprised You've made so much progress in such a short period of time. Most who end up here don't really stick around. I hope you don't feel like the teacher's pet, with me always singling you out like this. I hope you've been taking breaks to take care of your needs. I don't mean to be a nagging mother. I just care about you. You have only one body to sustain you, and we need you alive making the world a better place, as you do. Soon enough, we will hold hegemony over this world. And you won't have to carry such an unfairly large burden alone. This video was originally a 10-minute segment in BreadTube, The Final Discourse, but it felt like it took too much room in the video. How do you like my costume? As usual, Moon made it. Didn't they do such a good job? If you'd like a trick and a treat, check out my Patreon for a spicier version. Sorry honey, I must be going for now, but we will see each other s Sit on my fucking face! Ooh, girl smell, girl stink, huff huff, yeah yeah, ooh, babby boo boo!